Nestled like a sparkling gem in Southeast Asia, this dynamic city-state Singapore has charmed the world with its extraordinary success story. Despite its small size and lack of natural resources, Singapore has managed to transform itself from a relatively underdeveloped trading post to a thriving global economic hub within a few decades. But what hidden factors contributed to Singapore's rapid ascent from a struggling nation to a global economic titan? What are the pro-business policies and innovative initiatives that make Singapore a magnet for foreign investors and entrepreneurs alike? Well, be sure to watch until the end to uncover the full extent of this incredible success story. Let's dive in. Singapore's Humble Beginnings In 1965, Singapore became independent from Malaysia, but did you know that it was voluntarily ejected from its own land? A strategic and important part of Malaysia said, See you later! But little did they know, this seemingly grim beginning was just the start of an awe-inspiring tale. What would you do if you were a newly independent nation facing slums, opium addiction, violence, no significant industry, and hostile neighbors? Sounds like an economic calamity, right? Well, that's precisely the situation Singapore found itself in. With independence came uncertainty, and the visionary leader Lee Kuan Yew saw the storm clouds gathering. He believed in the Malaysian merger, but now Singapore stood alone against the looming economic calamity. As if the odds weren't stacked high enough, the departing British forces took a hearty chunk of the island's economy with them. A whopping 20%. Yet, this was only the beginning of the gripping tale of Singapore's rise to greatness. Fast forward to the present, and you'll be spellbound by the Singapore you see today, which stands tall as the fourth richest nation on Earth. With sheer determination, they paved the way to becoming a leader in high-tech manufacturing, boasting some of the finest infrastructure on Earth. And if that's not enough to blow your mind, Singapore serves as the financial and logistical hub of all Southeast Asia. Talk about turning the tables. But wait, how on earth did this once poor, tiny Asian island nation achieve such remarkable success? What's the secret ingredient to Singapore's incredible rise to riches? The answer lies in their commitment to education, health, and productivity. Singapore citizens are among the brightest minds, creating a powerhouse of talent and innovation. The British East India Company, powerhouse of the 19th century. In the 19th century, a powerhouse corporation, the British East India Company, ruled the waves, making more money than its own host nation. Their secret to success? Trading Chinese tea for opium grown in northern India. But the real deal was the Malacca Strait, where they desperately craved their own port. However, a naval superpower, the Dutch, held a tight grip on the region. When the company's policy was all about avoiding any Dutch drama, Sir Thomas Raffles decided to throw caution to the wind. He created a port on the sparsely populated island we now know as Singapore. A tenacious move that would change the game forever. Singapore wasn't just going to be another port. Oh no, it decided to be different, a free port. Zero taxes meant traders from China, Malaysia, and India flocked in droves, seeking their tax-free fortunes. Ships lined the horizon, eager to taste the riches this tiny island offered. But there was a catch. With limited administrative oversight, Singapore became a haven for less savory activities. The lack of oversight led to a hub of slave trading, gambling, opium dens, violence, and prostitution. The opening of the Suez Canal was a game changer. Now the journey from England to China was 5,000 miles shorter, cutting costs and boosting shipping demands. The new route favored the Malacca Strait, turning Singapore into the undisputed regional heavyweight. In 1867, it became an official crown colony of the British Empire. With rubber trees in Malaya and a global demand for tin, Singapore wasn't just a stopover anymore. It was the hub for Southeast Asia's riches. Resources poured in, boosting the economy and creating a symbiotic relationship with Malaya. The British military's presence also flourished, further driving growth. The Fall of Singapore but as the 20th century dawned, global conflicts loomed large, and even being 6,000 miles from Europe couldn't save Singapore from the impending storm. The Japanese Empire cast this ominous shadow, and by 1942, Singapore found itself under siege. Surrender followed, and for three years, suffering and destruction gripped the island. The aftermath of war left Singapore in ruins, neglected by a crippled British Empire. A chaotic rebuilding phase ensued, marked by haphazard slums and a struggling infrastructure. Poverty, violence, and unemployment loomed large, painting a grim picture for the tiny island nation. Independence For decades, Singapore had little desire to break free from the clutches of the British Empire. However, as the empire's support waned during the war, and with rising social unrest, the idea of independence took root. Enter Lee Kuan Yew, the man who dared to dream of freedom. With the People's Action Party, or PAP, he led the charge for sovereignty, defying the odds and braving the initial backlash from London. 
Lee's vision took flight, leading Singapore to merge with Malaya in a bid for survival. However, the dream quickly turned into a nightmare. A party favoring ethnic Malays took power, unleashing massive violence on the streets. Against all odds, Singapore found itself expelled from the Union, standing alone and independent. As Singapore found itself alone and independent, the real challenge lay ahead, building a prosperous nation from a population with no cohesive identity. How does one create jobs when natural resources are scarce? How does one lift 70% of the population from abject poverty, providing them with housing, education, and a brighter future? These questions weighed heavily on Lee Kuan Yew, who knew it was now or never to propel Singapore into modernity. Housing the masses, from slums to home ownership. Amidst the nation's transformation, one pressing issue demanded immediate attention, housing. With 70% of the population dwelling in squalid slums, Lee devised a bold plan. Land was acquired at low prices, and row after row of affordable housing emerged. Inspired by the British welfare state, Lee had a vision of empowerment, citizens owning their homes and taking pride in the nation's prosperity. Thus, the Central Provident Fund was born, compelling savings to build wealth and making Singapore a savings-savvy nation. This, coupled with cheap state-owned housing, proved a resounding success, elevating 80% of Singaporeans from slums to proud homeowners. Attracting foreign investment, tax haven, Singapore faced an uphill battle with no natural resources and a lack of existing manufacturing. Embracing its historical roots, Singapore kept taxes and regulations low, luring companies with massive incentives like tax exemptions for a decade. But wait, did you know that Lee even banned unions and encouraged businesses to fire striking workers? Controversial, yes, but it worked like magic. Lee also invested heavily in infrastructure and modern industrial zones, luring labor-intensive foreign businesses to set up shop. The result? Unemployment plummeted and Singapore's economy boomed at a jaw-dropping 13% annually. Controversial Measures Amidst rapid growth, Lee was determined to stamp out corruption and ensure policy effectiveness. He took drastic measures, including death sentences for the suspected corrupt and offering sky-high wages to government officials. Today, Singapore stands as one of the least corrupt nations on Earth, instilling investor confidence and fostering a climate of trust. Lee recognized Singapore's true wealth in its human capital and invested in technical schools, foreign training, and healthcare. This led to a surge in specialized industries, higher wages, and savings. The positive feedback loop of productivity gains pushed Singapore to new heights. By the 1980s, Singapore had become a global player in petrochemicals, pharmaceuticals, advanced computer components, and shipbuilding. Singapore also secured its position as the third largest producer of refined petroleum. The country's strategic location and booming financial sector made it a major logistical and financial hub for foreign investments. Lee spearheaded state-owned enterprises like Singapore Airlines, steel, iron, and chemical manufacturing, ensuring efficient and profitable operations. These enterprises diversified the economy, filled market gaps, and became a driving force of growth. And let's not forget the icing on the cake, Mao Zedong's Cultural Revolution, which scared investors away from Hong Kong and Taiwan, further boosted Singapore's rise. Revenue generated from state-owned enterprises filled the coffers of Singapore's Sovereign Wealth Fund, which further funded healthcare, infrastructure, and education, ensuring a brighter future for its citizens. The Cost of Success Balancing Prosperity and Freedom While Singapore's economic accomplishments are undeniably impressive, its authoritarian governance raises eyebrows. But let's face it, it's hard to argue with the undeniable prosperity it has achieved. Lee Kuan Yew's consolidated power allowed Singapore to maximize its advantages while limiting shortcomings. And while its path might not be replicable for every nation, it undeniably suits Singapore's unique context. Today, Singapore stands tall as one of the richest and most advanced economies globally. With a thriving port, world-class healthcare, and top-ranking students, this island nation has achieved what many thought impossible. But success came at a price. Political and individual freedoms were curtailed under its authoritarian governance. While we may not agree with the methods, there is no denying Singapore's remarkable accomplishments. So, what are your thoughts on Singapore being one of the richest countries in the world? Comment down below!